All right, you may want to grab a calculator for this next little bit. Just one calculation or so. Um, when we use uh, the base of log, or sorry, when the base of the log is not explicitly given, it is implied that the base is 10. Now, generally speaking, why do we use base 10? Well, because that's the way our number system is based off 10. The ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. So, when I see log 1000, well, it is implied that this is the log base 10, 1,000. So 10 to what power is equal to 1,000? 3, right? So if you write logs in exponential form, you'd get 10 to some power is equal to 1,000, and uh, that would be 3. Log... Now, look, there's no base here. Well, there's no base written. So it's implied that this means log base 10, 0 0.01. Well, 10 to what power? I'm going to put an x there just for help me get through this. 10 to what power is equal to? 0 0.01. Now, it may be m more beneficial, instead of saying 0 0.01, you write that as a decimal. And the words really do matter in math. We say this is one hundredth. So really, it's 10 to the power of negative 2. So log of 0 0.01 is equal to negative 2. So far, so good, I'm hoping. Now, let me look at the log of negative 10. Huh, the log of negative 10. So really, this means the log base 10, and my argument is negative 10. So 10 to what power will give me negative 10? Well, hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. Oh, wait a second. If I think about it, any positive number to any exponent must be positive. So this does not exist. There's an error to that. So maybe I'm just going to write a definition here. Do we agree that the base is always positive? That was one of the conditions that were given. Well, if the base is always positive, this argument here, the result must always, now I'm just going to, I really mean this thing here, must also be positive. Because a base that is positive to any exponent will yield only positive um, answers. If you want to prove me wrong, Pick a positive base, introduce an exponent, and try to get a, a negative result. It'll just won't work. So our argument also has to be positive. Now, this one here, since the base is not defined, um, 10 to some power is equal to 4. Oh. I don't know, right? I could say, get all clever on you, 10 to the power of 1 half, the square root of 10, right? Um, that's not 4, that's 3.3. So, but 10 to the power of 1 is going to be 10. So the exponent, 10 to some exponent is equal to 4. Well, it has to be somewhere in between 1 half and 1. 
here is where we introduce our calculator. There is a log button in your calculator. And if you just hit log, notice that there is no base. Log, my calculator opens up the argument. So I'm just going to type up 4. Did you know that the log of 4 is actually That's right. 10 to the power of 0 0.602. Oh. Zero five nine 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 one three is equal to four. That is an unusual notion. Previously, you dealt with a whole bunch of uh, exponents where it was either rational or, or is it, sorry, rational for sure, but sometimes negative. We can still have negative exponents, but here I'm introducing the notion where the exponent is an irrational number. That's kind of hard to digest, I think. But try it out. 10 to that, put that at power, I'll do it right now. 10 to that exponent is equal to 4. Weird. And I would imagine your calculator is just going to have a rounding error here. All right. So let's determine the value of the unknown. So determine the value of x. Now here, I, yikes, sorry. Here, I'm gonna, I really do have to be able to switch between exponential form and um, logarithmic form. So I'm just gonna change this log into exponential form. Well, base x to the power of negative three is equal to 1 eighth. Well, fair enough. I mean, if it doesn't hit you right in the head, we might have to do a little bit of algebra here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to envision I really don't like negative exponents. They really hurt my brain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise both sides of the equation to the exponent negative 1. So this ends up being x to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Now recall that negative, the exponent negative 1 is just simply the reciprocal. So x to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Well, maybe the answer is hitting you now, but I'm still going to apply mathematical operations here. Because having or dealing with exponents algebraically takes a little bit of practice. So now I'm going to apply um, an operation to both sides. I would like my exponent to come out being 1, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the product of power rule, and I'm going to raise both sides of the equation to the power of 1 third. Alternatively, you could have taken the cube root of both sides. I'm trying to show you exponents because they're fun. So x to the power of 3 all to the power of 1 third simply is x. 8 to the power of 1 third is really the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. Right? And you can check. 2 to the power of negative 3 is indeed 1 eighth. So now, I think some of these should be more fun. So base 9 to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to the argument x. Fair enough. So 
I'm just going to have some great time. So 9 to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to x. I'm just going to write it down there. Maybe give me some more space to write. And I'm going to choose to look at it like this. So 9 to the power of 1 half to the power of 3 is equal to x. And really what I did is I just really broke up my exponent to, um, into two different operations. 9 to the power of 1 half really means the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 to the power of 3 is equal to x. Therefore, x is equal to 27. Now, if you're having difficulty, maybe ask yourself, why am I having difficulty? Really try to pinpoint, is it the use of rational exponents? Is it me going from this step to this step? Really pinpoint why. Let's move on to the next example. I'm kind of scared about this example, not lying. Um, so I'm just going to say 2 to the power of negative x is equal to uh, 64. Yikes. So I notice that my exponent is negative. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to envision an operation that I can do to both sides such that it would make my exponent uh, positive. And that is raising both sides to the power of negative 1. So maybe you want to write that in the margins. Whenever your exponents, uh, whenever you, you have a negative exponent and you want it to be positive, raise it to the power of negative 1. So the left-hand side is simply will be 2 to the power of x. The right-hand side is now 1 over 64. So 2 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 64. So I could perhaps, yikes. So that's 2. Wait, 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 wait. Huh. Hmm. That's kind of tricky, eh? Hmm. Why don't I just write 64 to the power of negative 1? And by the way, just have fun with this. This is challenging stuff. So I'm going to try to write 64. I'm going to try to change 64 into base 2. So 2, 4, 8, right? 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Power 4 is 16. Oh, well, what am I doing here? Let me just try to figure this out a better way. Because this is really 8 times 8 is 64. And that's 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 3. And that's really just 2 to the power of 6. Those are all 64. So really, let me move that up here. 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 6, all to the power of negative 1. So really, 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of negative 6. Therefore, x is equal to negative 6. I want you to revisit this last equation. How would you do it differently? And one thing that I'm really starting to enjoy about seeing your work is how different people think. And yet, it's all correct. All right. We will proceed.